All right, welcome back, everybody. In the last episode, we left off with a cliffhanger, didn't we? We currently have the situation where a user can insert empty data into our database table, which, of course, we don't want to allow. Okay, so the solution is to apply a layer of validation, and I'll show you how to do that in this episode. All right, so yeah, just to restate the problem, notice right now if I leave the body text area blank, I can still submit the form. And if I now switch to table plus and give it a refresh, we have an empty row that has just been persisted. Okay, so I know what you might be thinking. Your first thought might be, well, let's go to our form. And here's our text area right here. Let's give it a reformat. And let's add the required attributes. So if you're not familiar with this, this states that, well, I can't make it any simpler, actually. It states that the text area is required. You have to give us something in order to submit the form. So if I come back and give this a refresh like that, notice now if I try to submit the form, it will prevent me from doing so. All right, so yeah, you might think problem solved. And even better, you didn't even need to write a line of code. Simply append the required attribute to any form inputs that are required. Um, but it's useful, but it doesn't actually solve the problem. So you can think of this as a, a layer of browser validation or client-side validation, and it is useful. It provides immediate feedback to the user to help them, uh, but there's nothing preventing the user from simply bypassing this layer of validation. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go to my terminal, yeah, there's nothing preventing me from manually submitting this post request, and I can use curl for that. So I can say curl dash X, and that declares the request type. In our case, we want a post request. The URL, let's switch back, see if we can find it. Yeah, it's gonna be localhost port 8888. And then the URI is notes slash create. Next, I will pass dash D to provide the data to go along with this post request. So I can say, all right, well, the body should be nothing. We submit it. And yeah, if I now go back to table plus and give it a refresh, yeah, there we go. So you see what I mean? We've now bypassed that client side or browser layer of validation. Okay, and in fact, if I just do it over and over, yeah, we're right back in that same boat. Okay, so don't get me wrong. It is useful to add that required attribute because it provides instant feedback, validation feedback to the user, but we can never um, exclusively depend on it. Okay, so the next step is to add some server side validation. All right, let's go back to our controller. And yeah, right here, let's see. It sounds like before we run our query, we should first confirm that the body meets our criteria. And we'll do it inline to start. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna use the strlen function that PHP provides. Of course, that stands for string length. And we're gonna look at the post body attribute. And if its length is zero, well then it's blank. And that means our validation should fail, right? All right, so how do we represent this? Eh, why don't we start by saying create a variable called errors, and that'll be an empty array. And then we'll do our validation checks. And if this one fails, we will append to that array like this. Errors body equals a body is required. Okay, so now think about it. If our validation fails, or in other words, if the errors array is not empty, should we still run this query to update the database? And of course the answer is no. We should effectively abort and return to the form and then notify the user about what they did wrong or, or, or what validation error occurred. Okay, so let's see, hmm, if that's the case. All right, so we can check if an array is empty or has no members or items by using the empty function. So yeah, if I did something like this, we're saying, all right, if there are no validation errors, then it's safe to proceed. So I could nest that here. Otherwise, we don't run that query and we require the view. But now when we require the view, there is an errors variable. Okay, so let's see what happens now. I will, actually, let's do this. Right now, I can't submit the form because we added that required attribute, which is helpful, but it's not helpful when I'm testing this out. So just temporarily, I'm going to uh, disable that. But yeah, in real life and at the end of the video, I will return it. Okay, so one more time, I try to submit the form and notice if we did everything correctly, well, actually, let's clear that out and then we'll try it again. 
So yeah, I will submit this form a bunch of times. And if we did everything correctly, when I give this a refresh, we no longer have those empty records. Okay, so our validation is in fact working. But now the next issue, as we discussed, is that we're not providing any feedback to the user. So they have no clue what the problem is. Okay, let's do this. Let's go into our view. And yeah, right below the text area. So let's do this. Uh, let's say, look at the errors array and see if we have anything for body. And if we do, then we should display that validation message for the user like this, errors body. And then we can close this out. Yeah, and I think that would do the trick. So now if we come back and I submit the form, yeah, it doesn't look too pretty right now, but at least we're providing some level of feedback to the user, which is great. Okay, so now let's make it look a little more attractive by saying, how about uh, make it red and then extra small and then a little margin on the top. Okay, one more time. And yeah, I think that looks fine for our example. Okay, so now think about it. We have two layers of validation. We have the client side or the browser validation, but then we also have a second server side validation that can't be bypassed. So even if we go through the terminal like we did earlier, notice body is required. Yeah, there it is. It doesn't work here either. And if, just to prove it, if we go back to table plus and refresh, yeah, there's no empty uh, record here, which is really good. Okay, but we're still not done. Yes, we are ensuring that you give us something, but what if you give us too much of something like this? I often get this with the Laracast forum where people think it's appropriate to paste 10,000 lines of code that they want your help with. And uh, yeah, you may or may not want to allow for that. So yeah, I'm just copying and pasting this like a crazy person to show you that right now, you could give us a mass of text that we then insert into the database. And again, maybe you don't want to allow that. All right, so let's give it a shot. And yeah, as expected, we blindly throw all of that junk into our database table, which isn't ideal. So it sounds like we need a way to apply a maximum number of characters that we will allow, or a minimum. Like imagine, uh, you're creating a registration system and you want to say, well, the password that the user provides should be at least I don't know, seven characters and at most 255 characters, right? You want, you want to set a minimum and a maximum for the number of characters that are provided. These are all things that validation can handle. All right, let's get to work. I will clear that out, switch back to PHP Storm, and yeah, why don't we do uh, another layer of validation? Let's do this. Let's copy that rule and we will run another check. If the length is greater than some kind of uh, arbitrary threshold you've set for your application, in this case, a thousand might be too little. You know, it just sort of depends on what these notes are. Can they be incredibly extensive or are they really intended to be short notes? It just depends on what you're building. But yeah, for the example, we'll say, okay, the threshold, the maximum is a thousand characters. And if you've gone over that, we can say, um, the body cannot be more than 1,000 characters. All right, so we'll switch back, but actually, actually, real quick. Uh, notice before I do that, you can imagine situations where for any form input that the user fills out, there could be multiple validation violations that you need to report. Like, uh, well, you did this wrong, but you also did that wrong. So if you want to allow for that, we might need to structure things a little bit differently. But for now, let's just keep it simple. Okay, so anyways, we submit the form and sure enough, a body is required. Now we require something, but I will add so many characters that will hopefully take us over the 1000 character maximum. We submit it and the body cannot be more than a thousand characters, which is great. But now we're on to the next problem. And I'm sorry, I told you, all of programming is solving problems. It's all you do. Uh, so yeah, the next problem is, even if you make a little mistake like this, uh, maybe you didn't intend to do this, notice I submit the form and I've now lost everything that I typed there. And maybe I would have preferred to fix the mistake rather than starting from scratch. Very likely uh, that's the case. Okay, so how do we how do we do this? Well, let's come back and let's go to our view. And maybe right here, as the value, of course, we can just add gibberish here and that will be included. So maybe we could just say, well, if we have anything uh, in the post 
uh, message body for this, then we should echo it out. So maybe something like this, echo post body. But yeah, it's not enough to do this. This might be your first thought. But notice if we give this a refresh, yeah, we get a warning, undefined array key body. Because remember, if we're just performing a get request, then the post superglobal will be empty. And that means there will not be a body key. So we can't always assume it. I'll show you a little trick here though. Uh, I'll show you the long form and then the shortcut. In the past, we would use the isset function. So look in this array and let me know if a body key is set or exists. And if that's the case, I can represent that with a question mark, then we will echo out that value. Otherwise, we will echo nothing. Yeah, I don't know if we've reviewed this yet. This is the ternary operator. Think of it as a uh, alternative syntax for if else statements. So the question mark is if. So if this condition is true the, then do this else represented by the colon, do this. All right, so yeah, you'll often reach for it for simple little one-liners that aren't too complex. But you can see right here that my editor is squawking because there's actually an easier way to do that. So this is the benefit of using uh, an IDE is they will often give you little tips like this. So notice I can replace this and this is the equivalent. I think it was introduced as part of PHP 8 or 8.1, I'm not sure, maybe. Yeah, maybe eight, something like that. But yeah, this is the equivalent. So yeah, these two question marks here, uh, technically they are referred to as the null coalescing operator. If you wanna get some points at dinner parties or uh, or lose some points more, more realistically. But yeah, it just checks if this value uh, exists and is not null, which is basically what we were doing earlier. So yeah, if it exists, then echo it. Otherwise, echo an empty string. All right, come back, give it another run. And yeah, I think we're in business here. So now if I paste in something that breaks the validation like we did before, notice that this time we see the validation error, but we don't lose what we typed into this text area. And yeah, that's probably what you want. Okay, so now I think I've taken up enough of your time for this episode. But yeah, if we switch back to our controller, this does the trick, but as you can imagine, it could get messy very, very quickly. And then further, if we repeatedly perform these checks for every single form on our site, oh, that just doesn't seem to make sense to me. And that's a little too much duplication for my taste. So in the next episode, we're going to extract all of this into a dedicated validation class. I'll see you then.